So in this session, we are going to discuss about spiral of silence theory. Elizabeth Noel Newman, the German political scientist, contributed the famous model called spiral of silence. In 1947, Newman and her husband found public opinion organization in German, and also she was the president of World Association of Public Opinion Research in 1978-1980. Through the spiral, spiral of silence theory, human indirectly explains the Jew status. During World War II, under Nazi's control, he Adolf Hitler dominated the whole society and the minority Jews became silent due to the fear of isolation or separation. So this theory is largely a historical theory and has uh, developed looking at the status of Jews back in the day when the World War II was happening and it was under the Nazis control or Hitler was uh, dominating the entire German society and how the Jews, the, the minority population uh, were forced to stay silent because of the fear of you know iso being isolated in the society or being uh, thrown away and that's how it went on to develop the spiral of silence theory. And the one view dominated the public scene and others disappeared from the public awareness as its adherents become silenced. So those people who you are know who are a part of the public uh, discourse, if they they disappear from the scene or they are forced to um, not share their awareness or their opinions, what happens is that leads from one segment to another and another, and subsequently, because of the fear of isolation or separation. People tend to fight, and this sort of a uh, you know the, the the whole attitude towards silencing the minority could be called as the spiral of silence. It refers to the tendency of people to remain silent when they feel that their views are in opposition to the majority view on a subject, and there is a constant fear. You know, as you can see, um, there's a diagram that is said in the center. You would see. There is spiral kind of structure. On one end, your opinions expressed by dominant, as dominant by mass media, constantly trying to feed you with dominant opinion. And then the other side, there are interpersonal support for deviant opinion, which is relatively less. And then there are the amount of people who are not living, who are not being able to openly express um, their deviant opinion to the dominant opinion. Okay. This is something that can happen in this country also and it has been happening as well. You can notice that in the last um, several years, the last five to six years especially, how democratic voices or dissenting voices are constantly threatened, forced to stay silent or remain silent. As we speak, there is Father Stanley Swami who has been arrested and, you know, put because he had put in his opinion, there is Umar Khali, the student leader, um, who has been forced to stay silent and not participate in, you know, in any kind of dissent. And there are several cases in the past that has also happened. So how the media project those kind of dominant opinions or how those people who do not necessarily agree to those kind of dominant opinions, how um, the media projects them and how the society perceives them. So it, silence of opinion, um, um, spiral of silence also refers to the tendency of people to remain silent. Okay. And uh, because they're constantly fear uh, and you know, remain in anxiety. This theory posits that they remain silent for a few reasons. So let's look at the reasons. The fear of isolation is when the group or public realizes that the individual has a divergent opinion from the state of school. So status quo is right wing, let's say, for example, right wing is doing um, an incredibly good job to develop this country. And if I am not, you know, of the same belief, then I have a divergent opinion that I don't necessarily agree that the right wing or the left wing or the Congress is not doing a good job or it is corrupt or divisive, so on and so forth. But then I don't, I can't express that or people um, who belong to similar opinion group would not be able to express that because they constantly feel that they could be isolated by their own family members, by their friends, and which is what 
has happened over a period of time. The fear of reprisal or more extreme isolation in the sense that voicing said opinion might lead to negative consequence beyond that, that is mere of isolation. That could be loss of job, loss of status, being thrown into jail, being thrown into um, you know, some kind of uh, isolation what so to say in the society that you're constantly being um, frightened that if you do so, if you engage in any kind of divergent opinion, you would have to face consequences. And that consequences would have a long-term repercussion or impact. So anybody who has could voice out their opinions would be constantly thrown into um, you know, dungeons. Let's look at an example in a company. The managing director decides to increase the working hours from 8 to 10 and sends email to all employees. Majority of them accept this time changes and few employees are not satisfied with this decision, but they cannot or ready to express their thoughts publicly because they feel that they might be targeted. They feel that they might lose the job because they feel unsupported by other employees. Because the dominant opinion is also a popular opinion. Most of the people accept agree to that. So if you if you have a divergent opinion, if you are away from the majority, then you are likely to face some kind of uh, isolation, that people are not going to support you. That's the kind of feeling that you are going to get. Then fear of transfer, like, uh, isolation, like transfer, you might, you know, might be thrown into a place which might appear like a punishment posting or something where, which is not conducive or suitable for you. Really living. Then the fear of rejection by rejecting their personal opinion from the public will help to avoid fight. Why should I indulge or engage, you know, in those kind of public fights and draw bad rep or draw the irking judgments of people around me? So I don't want to stay rejected. I want to be accepted by people. So I would agree to the personal opinion. Those sort of things also happen. Then they may try to save their job by suppressing. Or, or um, that's one of the important part, right? You know, there are people who are dependent on the jobs. So they try to suppress their voice or avoid any kind of personal confrontation in the public, you know, because um, it could affect your daily life, family life, so on and so forth. Then there are certain frameworks that is based on assumptions. The spiral of silence theory describes, uh, is described as a dynamic process. The prediction about public opinion in mass media, which gives more coverage to the majority of the society and gives very less coverage for minorities. Most of the times, minorities' opinions are they get less coverage. Okay. And this continues because people who are of majority, um, majority in view, who carry majority in view, or as some sort of you know impact or how they can influence public opinion in the mass media are likely to get more coverage. In a social environment, people have the fear of rejection to ex express their opinions or views, and they well uh, know known what behaviors will make better likelihood. So it's called the fear of isolation. You don't want to get isolated from the society. You want to be part of the society being accepted. So this fear of um, social isolation, you know, forces people to keep their expressions or opinions or viewpoints to themselves. Then being part of the minority, if you are a part of the minority, it's an assumption that, um, also assumption and to a large extent it's true that you will be forced into the belief system that spiral of silence theory is at work. People lose their confidence and they stay silent or mute to express their views because of the fear of isolation or they feel alone or unsupported. This happens in the case of sexual minorities caste-based minorities, religious minorities, uh, all across, because they won't be accepted. They will be thrown out. Sometimes the minorities withdraw their expressed opinions from the public debates to secure themselves from the majority, because there could be physical attacks. You don't know. You know, you could be thrown into jail. You could be killed for voicing out your opinion. So all sort of, you know, unfortunate things can happen, even if it, you are staying in a democracy. There's a larger possibility that if you are expressing your opinion in public, that you'll be constantly judged or you'll be marked or targeted. And um, that could lead to repercussions which are not conducive for basic living. Then maximum numbers get more vocal space in the society and less numbers get less vocal 
space and become silent. And this is something that has been there, the dominant paradigm and the dominant forces would always try to, you know, rule or they would try to judge the others as the minorities and try to, you know, throw their voices of the grid. Something that happens all the time. What are the advantages and disadvantages of spiral of silence theory? Is both micro level as well as micro level explanatory process. What it means is at the most fundamental level within a family, if you consider family to be, you know, the smallest um, social structure, you would find that happen and you would also see that happen in the case of a country. So the explanation kind of, the process of explanation kind of suits both smallest and the largest social units. Then it works well during the public campaigns and in the parliament. The minorities would always have less things to share because they constantly fear rejection. They constantly fear that their opinions would not be valued or they might be targeted, so on and so forth. It works during the public campaign. You would see the majority in point of view always has a larger um, public to accept that point or public people to uh, public support. Um, in any kind of campaign that happens. It also helps to raise questions about considering the role and responsibility of media in the society. Critics, in a way, spiral of silence theory also critiques that how those people who um, are public influencers, how they are uh, sometimes you know, forced to stay silent or remain silent and where media can take up the role of responsibility in the society by making more people aware that it's not necessarily the populist you know, dispensation, which does an incredible job or is ideal or suitable for a democracy. Rather, those dissenting voices, um, their opinions could be analyzed, why they are saying what they're saying, and that could be reported or brought into one more people. That would be an ethical scenario as far as journalism is concerned, or how media can actually act responsibly and make more people aware that not necessarily the populist arguments are the right one. Now, theory is not considering other explanation of silencing. Uh, uh, this is the disadvantage that what could be the other, you know, explanations of silencing, why people do get silenced. Um, Sometimes it would be just the persecution complex that you would have for a period of time that, you, that is developed inside you because you belong to a caste, you know, minority or caste group and you're born, brought up or raised. So those sort of background studies, you know, something that, you know, this theory tends to consider it mostly works at a surface level and looks at it very objectively uh, and gives you a frontal view of any kind of incident or event or people's lives. In some cases, the person may feel the majority's ideas opinion is much better than his own views. People also get, you know, subconsciously fall into it and they tend to accept it uh, as almost, you know, a scene of it that you know, uh, since the majority's ideas opinion um, matters, then it could be the right one. This is what leads, leads to the herd mentality of people. You know, everyone is doing the same thing, so it could be the right thing. So let me also do the same thing. Even if you have an opinion of yours, that doesn't matter. You constantly try to kill it down or try to curb it down because you feel that the majority's opinion or ideas is better than anybody else. Then it portrays overly negative view of media influence on the average people. Okay. That uh, media um, there's also a possibility and the average people are not intelligent enough to understand um, the repercussions that spiral of silence can have. So majority would always want people to, you know, uh, be subservient to the majority in politics or majority point of view. So at that point in time, media has a larger role to play. So what spiral of silence theory does is it locates media in a place which is negatively placed. So that's something that I wanted to share or talk about or discuss about spiral of silence theory. Um, the explanations and the examples are useful. So I'll stop here and then um, we'll proceed to the next theory, which will be the normative media theories in the next session.